fire has always been an enigma, isn't it? So if you begin to understand fire, <laughs> Whoa. have you ever wondered what this fire really is and began to ask questions about fire? Because that is going to be the focus of what we're going to do now. If we need to extinguish a fire, just like what the fire extinguishers do, then we will have to remove at least one of these three components of the fire triangle that we just spoke about. And once you remove one of these three components, then the fire will definitely die out. And finally, if I basically need to extinguish fire or to control fire, I will have to extinguish one of these three components. That's either reduce the heat or to go ahead and uh, cut off the oxygen supply or limit the fuel that is basically there. So, and this is exactly how a fire extinguisher works. We will need to remove at least one of these three elements so that the fire will die out. Now, let's explore how we can do each of these three. The best way to remove heat is to dump water on the fire. This cools the fuel to below the ignition point, interrupting the combustion cycle. And that's exactly what happens when you blow out a candle. When you blow, a ca blow out a candle, what you're basically doing is you're releasing a lot of cool air onto the wick of the candle so that it drops below the ignition temperature. And once it drops below the ignition temperature, the candle basically blows out. To remove oxygen, you can smother the fire so that it is not exposed to any more air. One way to smother the fire is to cover it with, say, a heavy blanket. Another way is to dump a non-inflammable material such as sand or baking soda on top of it so that there is the oxygen basically gets cut out and if oxygen cuts, gets cut out, then the fire automatically extinguishes itself. And removing the fuel is the most difficult approach for most fires. In a house fire, for example, the house itself is a potential fuel. The fuel will only be removed once the fire has actually burned down all of it. Uh, therefore, removing the fuel is not one of the most scientific ways in which you can basically stop the fire. Water is the most familiar extinguishing material and it is one of the most effective, but it can actually be dangerous if you use it in a wrong situation. A water extinguisher can put out things like burning wood, paper or cardboard, but it does not work well in electrical fires or fires involving inflammable liquids. In an electrical fire, the water may conduct the current which can electrocute you. Water will only spread out an inflammable liquid which will most likely make the fire worse. So you should be careful when you are supposed to use water and when you are not expected to use water. One popular fire extinguishing material is pure carbon dioxide. In a carbon dioxide extinguisher, the carbon dioxide is kept in a pressurized liquid for uh, it is kept in a pressurized liquid form in a cylinder. When the container is opened, the carbon dioxide expands to form a gas in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide gas is heavier than oxygen, so it displaces the oxygen from the surroundings and it basically settles upon the fire itself. This sort of fire extinguisher is common in restaurants because it won't contaminate the cooking equipment or food. The most popular fire extinguishing materials is actually made up of dry chemical form or powder, typically made up of chemicals like sodium bicarbonate, which is actually normal baking soda or potassium bicarbonate, which is nearly identical to the baking soda that you know. Baking soda starts to decompose at 70 degrees Celsius. What I mean by decompose is that it breaks up into its component parts. And when it decomposes, it releases carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide along with the insulation of the foam works to smother the fire.